All right, so that's all the smoke stuff that I think you can handle for now. Now, coming up now is the fire. Now, the, the fire is broken down into two things, as you can see here. There's the intensity, which is also, the density is a way to think of it also. It's basically where the fire is and how bright it is, and the fire temperature, which is the actual color. So this is the hue, meaning the reds, the oranges, the whites, and this is the brightness, okay, the value, um, how dark to how bright that red might be. So, um, that's two ways, that's two places to control it, and you'll see them repeated here, intensity and temperature scale. Um, so let's turn the temperature, or rather the fire, back on. So we put it to one, there it is. Now, we're dealing with black body radiation here. Now there are just constant, which would just be one color, of course, which, who would want that? Uh, there's ramp, where you you could plot your own fiery thing here. Um, some people will even make like a whole bunch of different colors in here, a bunch of different reds and yellows and whatnot to make their fire be all detailed and weird. Um, I like to stick to the physical black body, um, and I'll show you how we're going to add all that detail in in a moment. In any case, uh, so the intensity is coming in from the heat field, we talked about extensively in the simulation, and then again the temperature field is providing the color. So right now, it's getting blown out. As you can see, this doesn't look like an explosion, really. Um, we have all this crazy white and sickly looking yellow in here. Um, so let's, uh, let's make it look worse. Increase the temperature scale from 0.2 to 1. Um, I mostly do this because I don't want to deal with a 0.2 out here. I want this to stay 1. I want to move things in, in increments of of one. I want to know that the, whatever work I'm doing in the temperature area here is just going to be multiplied by one. It just makes it easier to think about over here. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now the color went from pale yellow and white to white and blue. That's because again black body radiation holds that well when things are hot they start off as infrared and you can't really see that heat coming off of the object. Not not with our visible light spectrum anyway. Infrared is of course the stuff that your remotes use and whatever, you can't see it. As it gets hotter, that wavelength moves from the infrared into the visual spectrum of red. As it gets even hotter, it starts moving towards yellow, then white, and then if it gets incredibly hot, it actually moves past white into light blue. And that's what we're seeing here. Um, so what does all that mean? Well, that means that the temperature values are way too high right now. So let's skip right past the fire intensity thing for now, and let's go to temperature. Let's see. So we're, what we're going to want to do here is fit that range. We're going to we want to remap the incoming values. And this is saying remap all the temperature from zero to one to zero to one. Well, that's not too useful. What if we went to zero to two? Now it's going to capture temperatures that are as high as two and push them down to one. We're kind of basically just dividing the temperature by this number. See how it got a little bit? It started pushing things back towards the yellow here again. Let's double that again. Now we're basically again, we're pulling, we're moving back away from those crazy high yellows and blues. Now we're going to eight. Now it's just down to have this nice golden thing. It's still, you know, it's still not enough. Let's try 16. 16 is not bad. Um, actually, 16 might be the, the number to use, but let's just go to 32 just to see. That's not bad either. That's this nice deep red. Um, I'm gonna go back to 16 for now. We can always change it. Um, there you go. Nice and orangey. Cool. So that's the color again. The temperature is providing the hue. You know what? I am going to go to 32. So the, this is providing the hue. Now the intensity of it, we can go back to here and say, we want it to be brighter. We want the fire to stand out from the smoke. See how it's, it's we, can, we can actually perceive how that this is brighter than the smoke. When this is at one, it's effectively just colored smoke. It's as if the smoke just has, it's a dust, it's a plume of orange dust. And we don't want that. We want it bright. 
We want it to be BAM! Look at that. It's in your face now. It's, it's actually making a bright light almost. Later on, when we use the volume light, this, these bright colors will actually cast light, making this look much more realistic. We have to trust that it'll do that later. But for now, when I look at this and I see bright colors here next to dark smoke, I know it'll look cool later that we're going to have this light bleed that will help integrate this fire into the smoke. Part of the integration comes from the way the smoke rests on it. Um, when, it, when this was the default of one, it's, like it's going to look terrible because look at that. The smoke just simply isn't dense enough. It's almost as if the fire is just slapped on top of it. It's overpowering the smoke. So what do we just have? We had eight, right? So if we go to four, you can see it's starting to, to, to take back over. And that's kind of what we want. We want this fight. That's how I try to imagine it. There's a fight between the smoke and the fire. And who will win? Um, if I actually go even harder on this now, 16 maybe, you can see like the smoke on top of the fire, which is nice. It helps to break up the fire already, giving us detail. And the detail that's not present in the heat field, but it's just perceived detail. See that like line of smoke? I love that. Those lines, those bunches of smoke here and there. That's a, a really cool kind of detail, especially when you see this, you know, in motion later on. Cool. Um, we're not going to mess with the heat field too much. Um, we're going to do most of our work in changing the color of the fire. But there's still some things to do here. We'll do noise in a minute, but I would use a, I like to use a little bit of a lookup ramp here. Nothing too crazy. Um, just give it some choppiness. That might be nice. So again, I always like to start with the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is like kind of a point of reference here. So something like this where, oh, you know, maybe it drops in and out here and there, you know, something like that. Something kind of cool. Just to kind of mess with it a little bit. So it's the same thing as the density before. As we look up how much heat there is, you know, how much fire density there should be, Maybe like, yeah, it's, it's gradually increasing overall as the field increases, but there'll be like some of these fallout things. And so you'll see those kind of appear in here. It'll be a subtle effect for our heat field, but it's gonna be way more important for our fire temperature field here. 